This is Twit. Ladies and gentlemen, on the line right now from Waco, Texas, Martin. Hello, Martin. Hey, guys. Good to see you. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Great to be here. I, I, I'm guessing because a Synology NAS has appeared on the table. <laughs> it's magic. That, that you're going right up Robert's alley with this one. What is your question, Martin? Yeah, I figured it would be. Um, so, like most households, we have a bunch of, uh, you know, devices on there. Um, and I've been looking into VPN services. Mm -hmm. And instead of installing a VPN service on every single device, I'd like to see if I can uh, actually install a VPN on my Synology and then route all my traffic from my network. Uh, through the Synology NAS. Oh, that's a good idea. A lot of routers have built-in open VPN Oh, support, yes, they right? do. That's fairly common. Does but, it Synology? Uh, yes, it does. And, but this, here's the interesting thing, because he actually wants to do it reverse from how it's actually been designed to do. Most Synology products, and actually most NAS boxes that have additional functionality, have the ability to act as a VPN server. Server, right. right. There's like open VPN running. Correct. On so yeah. I can use my mobile device or my laptop to connect back into my home network securely. Ah. He what? wants to do it differently. Okay. So he wants his box to connect to an open VPN or a VPN service and then route all his traffic through that way. Oh. It's like acting like a Tor server, basically. You know, VPN server. If, ex except in instead of having every device running a VPN client, you have one box running the VPN client, and then all the other devices on the network route their traffic through that box. Now, you understand that if you route all of your internal network traffic in your home through a VPN server that's somewhere out there, I understand why you might want to do that to protect your privacy right. from your internet service provider. Uh, you're going to slow things oh, down. yes. A lot, oh, right? Yes. A lot. Like yeah. how much? Uh, it, it depends on which VPN provider you're using. Uh, a lot of free ones, they'll give you, you know, maybe a megabit per second. Oh. Uh, some of the ones that... Oh. Not enough to watch Netflix. Yeah, no, definitely not. Okay. But I've also done some enterprise-ready VPN services that can give me almost line speed. I mean, it's, it's essentially, if, as long as I've got an engine that's doing the encryption for me, I, it's one or two extra hops, but other than that, it's, it's almost full bandwidth. So that's important, and, and I've kind of only recently, like this morning, yeah. understood this thanks to you, that there are a number of things that make VPNs slow. One is the processor yes. in the VPN server, because I was, I was using my tiny hardware firewall. This is a VPN server I keep in my, in my pocket for as we travel, but this has a very limited DSP processor in here, so it can't get too fast. The good news about Synology, they put pretty good processors oh, yes. in there, right? There's Those a are... dedicated encryption processor in there. Oh, is there? Yeah, so okay. it's a piece of hardware. In so that'll speed things up. Not all of the Synology boxes, but I think you had it, was it a 216 or a 213 that you have? 213, yeah. You have a 213. Yep. I think that's actually right at the low edge of having its own encryption processor. You might want to check the specs So on that's that. important for overall VPS speed. Very important. Sure. And then, of course, you're only as fast as the server you connect to. Precisely. So your bandwidth isn't really the issue here in most cases. Your bandwidth is going to limit you, but what's going to limit you more in most cases is how fast their bandwidth is or how much bandwidth they allow you to use. Precisely. Who are you going to use as a VPN uh, host? Uh, I've looked at a couple of different ones. Um, there's like OpenVPN and stuff like that that I've seen work on a Synology NAS. No, that's um, but that's your that's see this is different, right? Mm -hmm, that would different. be if you're the VPN server. But what you it sounds like what you want to do is have all your traffic go through a VPN to the outside world, right? I do. Yeah. yeah. So that means you're going to connect to a VPN server in the outside world. So you're going to go to somebody like Hotspot VPN or Tunnel, Tunnel Bear, Bear or there's there's thousands of these, right? Right. Do you have any experience with who's fast, who's good? You know, the, unfortunately, it really depends on where you live and what your provider is because that will all determine who's got the best path to you. So you, you really do have to try out the different providers that fall in your price range. And again, you can pay for a lot of bandwidth, or you can get something a little less expensive if you're willing to put up with a little bit of delay. Now, one of the nice things about using a setup like this is you can also decide which traffic uses a VPN and which traffic oh, doesn't. I like that. So, for so example, yeah. you're streaming media, you don't want to use a VPN. Precisely. But okay. if you want privacy, why are you using a VPN? Is it to hide from your ISP? Yeah, uh, you know, a lot of the privacy, privacy concerns that are out there uh, yeah. now. So I've, I've been looking into... VPNs just in general. Yeah. Yeah. So. Say no more. Say no, privacy is good. We like privacy. Okay. Now, thankfully, your box, like this one, you've got the uh, 213, I, this is the 713 Plus, so it's a, a tiny bit faster, but the same format. 
it's got yeah. everything you need inside of it to do this without even loading additional software that you have to pay for. Uh, if you go ahead and go to my, uh, my computer, the first thing we want to do, it's a two-step process. You're going to want to go into uh, your control panel and, uh, oh, wait, wait, there we go. And go into the network. Now, once you're in the network, you're going to see this little tab here called Network Interface. Now you can create a new VPN profile. So this is, this is built in. This is base. You have a couple of different options, PPTP, OpenVPN, or L2TP IPsec. Now, here's the difference. PPTP, don't use it. It's fast. It's the fastest of the three. However, it's been deprecated. So if you are concerned about privacy, PPTP isn't going to cut it. Really, the only people who use PPTP, you know what yeah, I'm talking PPTP, about, yeah. are, are smartphones, because a lot of them won't support these other protocols. Precisely, yeah. precisely. But I mean, uh, I can break PPTP, so... <laughs> Uh, yeah. If he can break PPTP, well, you yeah. know. If I've got limited hardware and I can break it, <laughs> anyone yeah, can break it. Yeah, it. it's been cracked. It's been cracked. Yeah. Uh, L2TP is nice, but the problem is that VPN doesn't actually encrypt. It's just a connection method. So you need to run IPsec on top of it, which adds complexity. Don't do that. The easiest way to do it is with OpenVPN. Uh, OpenVPN is open source, and it will most likely be supported by any VPN service that you, that you use. Uh, once you get in here, you just have to know uh, what do you want to call it. You have to know the server address, your username and password, the port that you want to use to access that VPN, and then the certificate. And the certificate is important because that's what it's actually going to be using to encrypt your traffic. Uh, once you have this done, what it, what, will, what it will do is it actually creates a client. So your NAS is now connected to that uh, VPN service. However, that doesn't mean that your NAS is now routing traffic from your network. To do that, you have to install a little something else called the proxy server. Actually, let's look at uh, my installed ones. Uh, there it is. So the proxy server, this is a free install. This is straight from Synology. This will allow you to turn on sort of a, it's a gateway. It, it, it says, let me give you the ability to route traffic through me. And because your box is already connected to a VPN server, if traffic is being routed through the NAS, it means it's being routed through the VPN. And again, this is pretty simple. All you have to do is activate the cache. Let me uh, go ahead and jump So the in. NAS isn't going to slow it down. It's got enough horsepower. And it's oh, yeah. not doing any encryption itself. Or it is. No, it has to, right? Yeah, yeah, it yeah. It does encrypt at its end. Okay. So uh, when I get into the proxy server, all I have to do is enable the caching. There we go. And then under proxy, oh, there we go. Proxy de uh, deployment, I'm going to enable web proxy automatic discovery. Now, every client, so a, a laptop, a desktop, or a mobile device that I want to use that VPN just goes to the web address of my NAS box, and my NAS box will automatically route it through the VPN. What I like about this setup is if you don't route it through the NAS box, it will go through the regular route to the router, and then it's not encrypted, but it's much faster. So you get to choose. Oh what goes where. It's a nice setup, and uh, it's, it's a, it, we call it a split setup. Don't do this. Uh, I've seen some, in, some tutorials on YouTube where they basically just put the NAS into the DMZ of your router. That's a horrible thing to do because it now means you've opened your storage device to the internet. Uh, don't do that, please, mm -hmm. because then I'll be reading your files. <laughs> gotcha. Thank you very much. Does that make sense? I mean, that's yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're gonna do a full tutorial on this, both both ways. So using the NAS box as a server and using it as a client on know how in about three weeks. So if you if you want a step by step, drop it in three weeks, and I'll have the instructions for you. And VPNs have gotten uh, faster. I'm just looking at the 2017 uh, VPN reviews on PC Magazine. So this is fairly up to date. In fact, it just came out uh, four days ago. And they, they have some numbers about the speed. Mm -hmm. They have some recommendations. So it is, that's the good news. They, they like NordVPN, for instance. It, it, that's the good news is there are VPN services you, want you can competition. use that yeah. will give you enough speed that you probably can do many of the things that you would do on your network without encryption. So that's good news. Yeah. And again, that encryption processor makes all the difference because otherwise your packets, your data gets delayed as it gets encrypted and then pushed over the VPN. This way, it's almost real time. Have fun and stay safe and private. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks for the call, Martin in Waco, Texas. Yeah, I feel like, um, is it Waco or Waco? Waco. Waco. Sorry about that. I feel like uh, this all started because the FCC yeah. overturned 
the, the nascent rule that hadn't really been in effect for very long that said ISPs can't sell your information to third parties. And people got very nervous because your internet service provider sees everything that you do. But remember, many of the things you do are already encrypted. For instance, all right. your Google searches are encrypted. They can't see those. A anything you do on Gmail and most email servers, they can't see that. So you may w really want to think about, well, how much of what I do is encrypted already your ISP, of course, can always see where you're going, but they mm -hmm. can't, in many cases, see what you're doing. And the most important one to me is uh, Google searches. I don't want anybody to know what I'm searching for. That's the kind of thing people can make all sorts of assumptions about based on what you search for. Oh, he must have cancer. He's looking for cancer treatments, things like that, that could perhaps really impact you. But again, Google does encrypt all searches. Yes, so, it does. So I think uh, that's an improvement. Uh, Facebook encrypts everything. And that's why I think the split set up is important right. because if if you start poking around and looking at your actual usage you can very quickly figure out what data is really sensitive and you care about and which data is well i don't care at all like netflix yeah who cares if they know i'm connected to netflix and for how long that's yeah. that's not information i want to protect however when i actually start reaching out to servers that i don't want people to know exist then yeah that's probably going to be going through a vpn or a tor right yeah. that makes sense